ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Usually in our business, the last thing we ever want to do is close down, roll back, be inconsistent, anything like that. Businesses around San Diego are bracing after a grim forecast from county leaders. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. The county expects the state to step in soon and tell businesses to close their indoor operations. Our ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Perro spoke with a restaurant owner who was again preparing to shut his doors. It's been more than a month since Bubs at the ballpark was allowed to let customers back inside. Face coverings and social distancing guidelines are just some of the changes that came with doing business during the pandemic. And now Bubs may be forced to reverse course. You have to have contingency plans, I think, in any business that you own. Todd Brown owns Bubs and is involved with several other San Diego restaurants and bars. He is preparing for challenging times ahead. Challenging doesn't even begin to encompass uh, what we're going through. On Wednesday, the governor ordered a serious rollback in reopening the economy. Certain sectors of the state we are now uh, requiring they close their indoor operations due to the spread of the virus. The new closures apply to several counties, including Orange, Riverside, Sacramento, and Santa Barbara. Those areas will have to shut down various indoor venues, including restaurants. San Diego County wasn't on that list. However, we anticipate by the weekend that we will be on that list as well. San Diego County officials say the county is on track to join the state's watch list by Friday because of spiking case rates that they don't believe will drop. This chart shows how the elevated case rate started Tuesday and would trigger restrictions on Monday, July 6th. Brown says he's already started to contact suppliers and staff to tell them to brace for a major setback. Usually in our business, the last thing we ever want to do is close down, roll back, be inconsistent, anything like that. And uh, the way the times are dictated for us now, that's exactly what we're doing. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. And as restaurants keep a cautious eye on our COVID numbers, some of San Diego's cultural attractions are preparing for what could be a very short-lived reopening. Our ABC 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle continues our team coverage with a look at the options Balboa Park is considering to help museums that may only be open this weekend. It's no wonder Balboa Park attracts more than 4 million visitors each year. Its iconic buildings hold San Diego's history and the exhibits inside inspire the mind. We want to make sure people come back to the park. It is the cultural heart of San Diego. Peter Comiskey, the executive director of the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership, said they closed in March like the rest of the state due to the pandemic. Two weeks ago, he said the Air and Space Museum led the way in reopening and this weekend they'll welcome back more of our favorites. And this weekend, uh, we have slated another five museums will be opening. So it's a, it's a busy weekend for the park. A reopening that could be short lived after the county's announcement Wednesday, saying if we don't contain the spread of coronavirus, museums, zoos and aquariums could be ordered to close as soon as Monday. We're certainly hoping uh, that all the people of San Diego County are able to to uh, to really pull together and make sure that they, that uh, the uh, the infection rate and the, and the caseload and all of these lovely metrics that are being measured uh, and really important metrics that are being measured um, can be contained and can be controlled. While hopeful, Comiskey said if they have to close Monday, they will. Looking at the future, Comiskey said they're brainstorming how to bring in money to help these cherished icons survive. I think as uh, time goes on, um, we need to certainly look at what uh, fundraising is possible. I think we need to look with for those organizations uh, that rely on revenue through the gate. Safety top of mind and hope the doors will stay open. Cass Carlisle, ABC 10 News. Here's the problem. Our latest local numbers. The county announced 474 new cases today, bringing our total to 14,600. And there were seven new deaths, bringing that total to 372. The program that allows businesses on Fifth Avenue and the gas lamp to expand into the street will only run two days this week. Curbside gas lamp normally runs in the afternoons and evenings every Thursday through Saturday. But the Gas Lamp Association says it couldn't get a permit for this Saturday. That's because San Diego police officers will be busy patrolling other parts of the city for the 4th of July weekend. 
Meantime, the East Village is gearing up for its own curbside program starting next week. The East Village Association says it plans to shut down J Street from 7th to 10th along Petco Park next weekend to give restaurants more space outside. Six restaurants are signed up for the first weekend. It's a great program that is unique and hopefully can provide a pathway to success because, you know, I, the chances are this isn't going away anytime soon. So, you know, we, we've got to come up with some longer term strategies to help keep everybody moving forward. Curbside East Village is scheduled to kick off Friday the 10th from 3 to 10 p.m. and Saturday from 10 to 10. It's unclear how these outdoor dining programs could be affected if San Diego ends up on the state's watch list. Los Angeles is adopting a color-coded system to show how much risk people in the city are of contracting COVID-19. The colors go from green to red. Green meaning low risk, red of course meaning high. Mayor Eric Garcetti said the city will go back to its mandated stay at home orders if it hits red. Right now, it is one threat level away at orange and people are encouraged to stay home as much as possible. A troubling new milestone nationwide. For the first time, 50,000 Americans tested positive in just one day. Much of the country is now rolling back reopenings. ABC's Zoreen Shaw has the positive news coming from companies racing to make a vaccine. Much of America taking a step back or halting reopening plans ahead of Independence Day, including California, which reported nearly 10,000 new cases on Wednesday. Its governor placing new restrictions on bars, restaurants and movie theaters in 19 counties. The bottom line is the spread of this virus continues. Uh, at a rate that is particularly concerning. New York's mayor also stopping plans to move forward to allow indoor dining. Even a week ago, honestly, I was hopeful we could, but the news we have gotten from around the country gets worse and worse all the time. Getting worse throughout the country, including Arizona, with another record jump. Vice President Pence seen wearing a mask arrived in Phoenix on Wednesday. Parts of the country getting on board to make those masks mandatory, including Miami-Dade County, where facial coverings will be required in all public spaces. A Miami nurse saying patients she's seeing are more critical than before. If things don't change and people don't take it a little more serious in the next two weeks, you know, who knows where we will be. But there are positive signs for a vaccine in the next year. Pfizer just announced strong results from initial phase one and two trials, indicating they could move on to their next phase with 30,000 volunteers in coming weeks. Oxford's trials are in phase three. If their vaccine is found to be safe and effective, they could have emergency doses of the vaccine ready as early as October. Moderna also about to embark on phase three of trials. But the president on Fox Business Wednesday with a slightly different perspective on how the virus will be controlled. And I think we're going to be very good with the coronavirus. I think that at some point uh, that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. You still believe so? Disappear? Well, I do. I do. Yeah, sure. At some point. Right now, this virus is here to stay. Hospitalizations up in 25 states, deaths up in 14. So many leaders just bracing for the 4th of July, hoping that folks follow guidelines. Zorin Shaw, ABC News, Los Angeles. And this just in tonight, classes at USC will be held almost exclusively online for the fall semester. The university made the announcement late tonight. Activities on campus will be limited and students are being told to reconsider living on or near campus. The reversal comes just one month after USC said it would allow in-person learning this fall. 24 people are dead after gunmen entered a drug rehabilitation center in central Mexico and opened fire today. The attack happened in a city east of Guadalajara, but investigators haven't yet determined a motive. It's believed that drug gangs were involved. The area has grown increasingly violent as a cartel and a local gang wage war. The White House continues to face questions about whether President Trump ignored reports that Russia paid to have U.S. troops killed in Afghanistan. A military official says the information first came to light when raids on Taliban strongholds uncovered large amounts of American cash. But President Trump says this is a hoax. From what I hear, and I hear it pretty good, uh, the intelligence people didn't even, many of them didn't believe it happened at all. I think it's a hoax. 
The White House says separate briefings were provided for some Republican and Democratic members of Congress. Tomorrow, the president's national security team will brief top congressional leaders about the intelligence. Meantime, Russian voters have overwhelmingly approved a referendum that could allow President Vladimir Putin to stay in power until 2036. The package of constitutional reforms passed by more than 73 percent. It essentially resets the clock on Putin's term limits, allowing him to seek office two more times. Putin has been the president of Russia since 1999, briefly serving a term as prime minister from 2008 to 12. A brush fire north of Los Angeles has grown to at least 400 acres tonight. The U.S. Forest Service and L.A. County are working together on the Roher Fire near Agua Dulce. It's burning in a rural part of the Angeles National Forest. It is not currently threatening any buildings. The Red Cross will have nearly 100 hotels available to house people during fire evacuations. Well, the rooms will replace large shelters this season, and it will help ensure social distancing. More than 200 other locations will operate as small shelters for no more than 50 people. Evacuees will get individual meals instead of cafeteria-style service. Cal Fire is urging property owners to clear brush around their homes, and the county wants everyone to include face coverings and hand sanitizer in their evacuation kits.